Hi guys, I wanted to address the issue of writing. Um, a few of you folks had some trouble with this. And AP writing often isn't writing a lot. It's about writing with focus. It's, and if you have a simple tool in your tool belt when you have to approach a question and you'll know to pull it out, then you're not wasting time in trying to figure out a strategy. So we talked about AP and we used that last year, but that's a, a, a kind of a focus that I got from teaching AP. So you have a question here at the top. Let me see if you can see it better here. Is how did the impact of the Silk Road extend far beyond the economics of long distance trade? So economics, again, we talked in Spice is simply the, is the, the, the creation and exchange of goods and services, but how was this more than just goods and services? So she said the Silk Road was more of impact than just moving goods around, okay, which kind of confirms this. The Silk Road brought different cultures and gave way for the growth of different um, religions. Okay, that, that's a claim right there. The rise of Buddhism started off as a religion in, in India, but moved in parts of China. It would also move further, you'll see later on. Also, the Silk Road brought illness that other parts of the world weren't prepared for and let half of Europe being wiped out. Different religions and illnesses were carried across the Silk, Silk Road and spread across Africa, Eurasia. Um, she developed two claims with that. Now, if we go back to um, number one here, in what way did long distance commerce act as an engine of change in pre-modern history? Develop one possible answer. Long distance commerce acted as an engine of change in pre-modern history by requiring transport of goods, but also change in culture. Okay, um, I would say that maybe in that case you want to make say want to say is how did it in what way did it because really you're you're just restating the question here on this one. Long distance commerce acts as the engine of change by what? So you want to talk about change. You might want to talk about as a vehicle of change by directing cultural diffusion or by directing uh, cultural patterns from one end to another. And then you could take a look. Large amount of innovations and new creations which gave merchants and civil, um, civilians access to new cultures and resources. Okay, so I would also maybe you need to qualify that with some specific evidence. As people traveled, many people took interest in Buddhism and carried it to their final destination. Also, the Black Death was spread along the path, which caused residents and travelers to adapt to new rules of living. Now, that idea is you talk about an agent of change that on those pathways, the, the key here is um, that it brought new ideas and new, and new products to different parts of the world. And it's interesting that the commerce created kind of an appeal. It drew people to each other. And when it drew people to each other, it, it drew more. If there wasn't silk, for example, or there wasn't pepper, or there wasn't something that people wanted, people would not have ventured on the Silk Road. That's one of the interesting things we need to think about as a big picture for this chapter is that if all cultures and all societies had equal resources in the same climate, there might not have been a drive to change, a drive to, to venture out and to interact. And without that drive to interact, then you don't have, for example, Buddhism getting into China. Or you don't have maybe even someone say the printing press and some of the ideas there coming into Europe. And then you don't have the Black Death. See later on was also transformative. So when you take a look at those, remember the simple idea is give you a one word, a, a one sentence answer that's not just an obvious restatement. And you know what never works is saying it was very important or there are many reasons. You need to qualify. Your statement needs to be qualifiable as we took we looked at that earlier this week. We'll talk more about that. And then you go about finding two pieces of specific evidence that clearly align to it. And then tell me how does the evidence connect to the answer? Okay, we'll continue to be doing these things. It's a very important exercise. I will indicate